So let me explain uh, something about social anxiety uh, to you guys. And I'll first start off by explaining why it is difficult. It is a difficult thing to face um, for anyone who has it and anybody that, that wants to overcome it or certainly make improvements with it, you know, get to a, get to a point where uh, you might have it uh, with people, but you have enough confidence and you're able to control the anxiety and you know you can make yourself relax or you can handle being uncomfortable in social situations and you're able to get on with life and and be happy and be confident and interact with people so the re the reason it's difficult to begin with is because it's a very it's an uncomfortable feeling to feel uncomfortable around other people so that so that's the first part why it's difficult and it's difficult for people to tell themselves that you know, it's, it's difficult for people, sorry, to, to motivate themselves to keep facing that feeling. That's what's very challenging. And, and I've observed that obviously through coaching hundreds of clients over the years. And I also had to go through that myself of overcoming it. So that's challenging because logically, obviously, generally for people, if something doesn't feel nice and you've got the chance to avoid it, you're going to take that option. You're going to avoid it. But like I've said in all my videos before, and I'll say again, the problem with avoiding social anxiety is that it, it's, it doesn't go that way. It's just going to stay to the level that you have it right now, however bad that is for you, or it's actually, it will get worse. The longer you leave it, the longer you avoid people and social situations and facing that social fear, the worse it gets. So, you know, it's, it's quite a unique challenge maybe to some other things, for example, like let's say you had a fear a fear of flying, like some people got that fear. Now, maybe if you went on the plane three or four times, you might be able to completely overcome that fear. I'm not saying guaranteed, but there's a high possibility. Let's say five, a certain amount of visits, but social anxiety in my experience is a bit more stubborn than that. You're gonna have to work at it. It takes a long time, it takes a lot of effort. Hence why I do six weeks programs and some people do it, end up doing a year. It, it, it depends on where you're at as well. So you, could, you shouldn't compare yourself to me or other people because you don't know what they've been through in their life. You don't know what sort of anxieties or traumas or, you know, you just don't know. So you, you, can, you should only compare yourself to you, to how much you've improved from the last week or the previous month or previous year. So... That's challenging, being uncomfortable. And then, and then, of course, you know, fight or flight. Some people get real... I used to get it. I don't get it anymore. But if they're going to a, so, if they're going to a social situation, they get really bad panic. Some people get panic attacks. And that's obviously not... That's not an easy thing to deal with, where your heart's beating. You can't... You, you know, you can't breathe properly. So I'm not... Not everybody's going to have symptoms that are extreme. But many people do, and I did at certain points um, of my life. So that's challenging. If somebody goes through that, it's going to be hard for them, depending on if they've got a coach or someone helping them or friends or family. It's going to be hard for that person to motivate themselves after going through something as challenging as a panic attack or an anxiety attack or stress or really intense emotions. It's going to be hard for that person to think, you know what, I'm going to go through that again and again and again. But obviously, what I try my best to do, and I'm usually successful, depending, obviously, if the clients or people that I'm helping, if they really want to overcome it, it makes my job easier, it makes it a lot easier. But if people don't really want to do it and they're not ready, then I wouldn't be able to help them. That's when they've got to get help elsewhere or you just got to accept. I have to accept that some people just can't do it. They're not ready to do it at the moment. And they just got to continue getting on with their life wherever they are. Even though they're not going to, they're not going to be happy, obviously, for the most part. So it's understanding the challenge and the task at hand. It's And it's understanding the consequences that are positive and negative. Now, as I've said, if you don't face it, it will stay the same or it will get worse. The likelihood is it will probably get worse over time. Your anxiety will get worse. The symptoms will get worse. And it would, you'll just build it up in your head more and more, more than what it actually is. Um, but in reality, 
when you're in these situations, 99.9% .9 of the time, nothing bad actually happens in reality. In most cases, nothing ever did for me. All the fears I had in my head, all the anxieties and the worries, then none of them came true. And none of them have come true for you know so many clients, the hundreds that I've coached on the Six Weeks Confidence Programme, when I do the Weekend Confidence Programme, the Fearless Events, when I coach people over Zoom. Nothing actually bad happens, but emotionally, there's going to be inner turmoil for people until they make progress with it uh, and improve. And that's why I do these videos. I spend so much time and, and I teach because um, I'm really passionate about helping people to make progress with getting over social anxiety. Now, I've kind of covered, you could say, the negative part, the, the, the fears. Now, moving on to the positive bit, which is my favorite bit personally, when you change your mindset from not wanting to go into social situations because they don't make you feel good and, and it makes you anxious or panic or anxiety or panic attacks or mild panic attack or nervousness or, you know, un uncomfortableness. When you, ch when you change your thinking and you've got to be, you've got to choose to be mentally strong to do this. When you start focusing on the reward, <clears throat> the reward you're going to get for, for being courageous and facing this fear and going into situations and meeting people and going through that nervousness and uncomfortableness, that's when you start getting the confidence. The confidence comes as a result of you going through that consistently over and over again. Example, coming to my fearless event, I keep saying it and sticking to it, not just coming to the event once and then never coming again, coming to the event every month. Or come, go into my, what a lot of my clients do at the moment. One of my clients, he does my six weeks confidence program. He's booked my weekend program. He's going to come to um, one of my fearless events. He goes to other events. He goes to speed dating. He does improvisation classes. Um, he goes to comedy comedy clubs. He, he's been doing it a long time. That's why he's making so much progress. So when you start changing your mindset, basically, this is what you've got to do, guys. Let me just make get to the point if I can. It's not always easy explaining this. You, you've got to make a decision. Am I, am I, you've got to make a decision. Am I going to face it and get through it and tough it out and come out the other side happier and more confident and eventually overcome it or really improve at it? Am I, am I, am I willing to go through discomfort? Am I willing to go through nervousness? shyness embarrassment awkwardness am i willing to go through that and if you are willing to go through that you can overcome it you can overcome it in, in due time when, whenever that's going to be that's different for everyone i can't say i can't give you a time it's impossible everyone's different and it depends on how much practice you put in and how much momentum you build and how consistent you are so you've got to ask yourself that question um and if you're not willing to do it, then you're going to stay, unfortunately, where you are. But once you start seeing, this is what happened to me, and then this is why I had the passion to start teaching, this is what happens to my clients, and I want this to happen to all of you. Once you start seeing some progress, even if you just see a little bit of progress, for example, I don't know, let's say that there's a situation that you'd usually be nervous in, and you, and you wouldn't be able to communicate, and you might exit out of the situation. Let's say going in buying groceries is difficult for you, and making eye contact and talking to the, you know, the person that works in the store. Maybe in that situation, you just buy your groceries and, and leave the situation quickly. Now, the next time, what if you used to stay there a bit longer and just say to the person, like, how you doing? You're right, how's your day? That's it. That little bit of progress that you've made is an incentive that will make you feel, make you feel a little bit better about yourself. It'll give you a bit more self confidence. Therefore, you it will make you it will motivate you to want to keep making progress. So that's what it is. All these things that I'm saying, these are these are all the little bits and pieces or ingredients that you need to either overcome it or to choose to not overcome it. But obviously, you're going to have to live with the consequences. That's the problem, right? That's what's tough for people, which is why I encourage you to do the latter, the second option, which is to face it. But yeah, you've got to change your mindset because it's hard to face something that's frightening and uncomfortable in a mindset that is a mindset where you're cowering away, where you're, you're scared, where you don't want to face it. You're basically saying, I don't want the consequences 
of having to face my fears in order to gain confidence and you know achieve my goals in life whatever they may be everyone's different for some of you it might be to go on a date so you can get over the anxiety of getting more comfortable on first date so you can get a girlfriend for some of you it might be to do public speaking some of you it might be video vlogging some it might be around your family people job interviews going into shops you know one of whatever it may be it's having um it's accepting that and when you when you when you make that commitment to yourself and to the fear and you say i don't like the feelings it's scary i am scared but i accept it and i'm and i'm yes i'm signing up for it i want to face these emotions because i want to i want to get i want to make progress with my confidence i don't want to stay the way i am i want to feel myself getting more comfortable around people being able to hold eye contact have conversations you know with everyone for a lot of you guys it might be with women specifically it, that's where your anxiety might be most um it might be most prominent there for some of you it might be talking to guys making friends or family or it might be both it might be you might just be anxious talking to both men and women in all situations so if you really want to make progress you're going to take a program with me. You're going to get a confidence program. You, you will invest that because you'll be so committed to doing it or you'll come to an event or you'll go out and practice talking to people. But if you're not, in, if you're not committed enough, and I've said it before, it's, it, then you're not going to improve and nobody, is really, nobody can do anything really, can they? I mean, they might be able to give you some emotional support. Your family hopefully can do that for you. But in, in actual, in regards to improving this problem, it ain't going to improve just by having uh, a little bit of emotional support. I mean, that's going to help you. I'm not, I'm not knocking that completely. But you're going to need more than that. You're going to need a practical approach to a solution to a problem that, that requires that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So knowing what I know now, it's a pleasure for me to share it. Because when I started out, I didn't, ha I didn't have the understanding. I didn't know all these things. I just thought... I've got a problem, there's something wrong with me. Most people don't have it. I shouldn't have this problem and I'm a bit embarrassed about it. What do I do? When I started to overcome the problem, I realised, no, everybody has this problem at some point. Some people don't op they openly don't admit it. Um, you know, some people might not have it as bad, but as, you know, everyone has fears, everyone has anxieties, everyone has been shy, everyone has been awkward at times. So at some point, everyone's had social anxiety. Um, it's just some people deal with it better than others. And... I eventually, as a lot of you know, I chose to face it and it changed my life. It will change your life if you face it consistently. It really will. But it's not going to be easy. You, you're going to have to put in a fight. It ain't just going to be, you know, even when you get mentorship, I'm honest about that with people. You, it doesn't mean because you take my programs that it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be easier, but it's not going to be easy. If anything, it's going to be just as hard at the start because I'm going to push you to face things that you probably wouldn't face on your own ever. The unlike it's unlikely. Depend it depends on obviously your personality and your mindset. So when you change the mindset and you start to work at you work at it over time. So you take the action and you change the mindset. So number one, instead of thinking, well, I don't want to face people, I don't want to go into social situations because it isn't going to feel nice and I'd rather not feel that way, I'd rather try and wait or whatever, you know, ignore it, block it out. Can't do that if you want to progress. You've got to say, actually, I'm going to face it and I'm going to deal with these emotions when they come and I'm going to do the best I can to stay calm, to socialise, to be myself, to be honest, to be open with people, when you start having that attitude and then you actually go and face situations, so the combination of the new mindset or the new way of thinking about it and the practical approach, that's when your life's going to change, all right? So I hope this is going to help a lot of you. Now, what I'd say is come down to my next Fearless event on the 15th of um, May, which is in two weeks, I think, two weeks from, from t actually from today. Because this is the perfect opportunity to practice getting over social anxiety. I can't recommend a better way of getting over it than coming to an event. And especially an event where, you know, you're around good people that are understanding and are supportive. And that's pretty much why we're all there. To make progress with our social anxiety. To lower it. Get the confidence up. And once you get... See, that's the thing. Once you get 
confidence or gain, sorry. Sorry, guys, I haven't had any breakfast or coffee, so I think my words are not flowing as, as they usually would, but that's fine. Once you gain confidence and you make progress, you're gonna, it, you just go from strength to strength. So basically what I'm saying is it's hard at the start and it's hard somewhere in the middle. But when you get to a certain point and you start making progress and you do become a confident person, that's when it just everything starts going positive for you. And that's when you that's when you've really overcome it. Now, of course, at that point, you still got to maintain the habits that have got you to that point. Because if you overcome social anxiety, then you stop socializing. You say, oh, I've overcome it now. I don't need to talk to people. It's going to creep back in again slowly. Old habits die hard or die young. I think, I think it's die hard, die young. <laughs> so you've got to keep working it. That's why I still work at mine, just because I'm a teacher and I help people with it. It doesn't mean that I'm excluded. I have to work at being social. I have to work on taking action, challenging myself, going out, teaching, making videos, dating, socializing with family, you know, talking to people from day to day. So it's a social skill that you've got to learn and you've got to also learn to control fear and anxiety, all right? So I hope that helps any of you. Let me know if you want to come to the Phyllis event. I'm sure if you want to come, you'll find my email below. And if you need coaching to get over social anxiety in any area of life, any situation, whether it's dating, social life, or a bit of both, then email me and apply for the coaching, all right? Good luck, guys.